Hello again. Now, this isn't a full episode, but rather a supplement to my hit and missile repair video I have posted on my channel. So, in this short video, I'm going to be demonstrating one of the methods I use for repairing the plastic film strips with the images of the aircrafts on them. Uh, why would they need repaired, you ask? Well, through age and normal wear, the square holes along the edges of the plastic can tear, become elongated, and this wear manifests in the film strips hesitating or stopping during gameplay. Now this happens because the strips are slipping on the gears. This can impact the speed of the game and inhibit higher scores. So more importantly, if it's not fixed, they can continue to damage the plastic strip. So I've had some success repairing them with clear packing tape. I'm going to show you how to do that. But uh, first, I want to show you the tools that are going to be needed. Okay, so there's not a lot of tools that are actually needed. Uh, a pair of scissors, precision Phillips screwdriver, an X-Acto knife, and a tool for smoothing out the tape, keeping air bubbles out of it, a thin piece of cardboard, and I use clear packing tape. And also, you're probably going to need your soldering iron because there is one wire that needs desoldered during the disassembly. So let's get started. Okay, you should have the game disassembled down to this point. If you don't know how to do that, check out my other video on disassembling this game. Um, but once you're down to where you just have the cover off and the purple plate sitting there, uh, and the screws are out of the purple plate, you'll start with that piece first. And again, you slide it towards you underneath the film. Careful not to lift up and tear it. Okay, next you want to remove the black bar at the top of the firing assembly. And then you have to remove the spring on the lower left side because you need to be able to lift up on the firing assembly to get out the film out and you want to stretch and ruin that spring. Um, you stretch it out, it won't work. Now you want to desolder the white wire that runs from the explosion light, the white assembly you see there in the middle of your screen. My wire is red because I had to resplice it and repair it on this particular machine. Yours should be, wired, should be white, they're pretty standard machine to machine. I curl the wire up here to keep it out of the way. Now I am taking out the four Phillips screws that hold down the fill mount. And once those are out, we're ready to lift out the fill mount and get to work. So to lift out the fill mount, grab the firing assembly with one hand, grab the fill mount and pull the fill mount towards you right through the fire assembly. And remember there's a green wire attached to the fill mount, so don't pull it too far from the game. Um, so I found desoldering just that one white wire makes it very easy to remove this fill mount. Now we're ready to get to work on repairing this film strip. So to take the film strip, you want to flip it over and get the film to the portion where you're going to be working on and have it over the silver metal contact plate you see there. I find it's a great working surface. That's why you need a thin piece of cardboard so you don't scratch up that contact. Um, so my piece actually was a little too thin, so I folded it in half and slid it under the piece of film. And when using the X-Acto knife to cut out the squares and the tape, you don't damage anything underneath. Okay, so now I'm taking the packing tape. I'm going to tear off a rectangular shape. And what I normally do is get a pair of pliers or something to hold it with and minimize my fingerprints on it. And I cut a rectangular piece and cut the length down to how many holes I want to, squares I want to cover. Either three, four, I like to overlap a little bit just to reinforce where the tear is. So I'm getting it shaped and sized. Okay, now I'm using the uh, pliers to hold it. I'm a little bit more careful not getting a lot of fingerprints on it. This is a demo, so I may have been a little more reckless. But I'm still trimming it down because I don't want it too thick. And you don't want it hanging over the side of the film because it will rub and snag and everything. All right, so this still photo is from another project I did. You can see this rectangular piece of tape and I'm holding it with the pliers. And uh, you'll see I had a white piece of paper or cardboard. I don't recommend white. It's harder to see the squares. I think an off-color piece of cardboard works better. You can see the detail of the squares better while you're cutting with the X-Acto knife. Uh, this is a close-up. And so again, as I start to apply the tape, I'm using another tool to smooth out the tape. Uh, to keep air bubbles out and it may be a little hard to show up on that video um, so here we go with that step okay I actually only just simulate putting the tape on the film strip as this was just a demo but I'll use the other tool once I get the tape down I use this other tool to smooth out the piece of tape get air pockets out 
and actually go into each square and make a little indentation in the tape. I find it helps guide your X-Acto knife a little easier and it'll stick it to the back of the cardboard. So here's a close-up showing you what I was doing. Um, this was from another project. I don't recommend a piece of white cardboard or paper because it's harder to see the details of the square. I'd recommend something more off-color. And so take your X-Acto knife, make short cuts, or maybe just press down on it for each square. It could take you 20 minutes depending on how much you've covered. And you don't want to tear the plastic, obviously. And just, you know, just take your time with it. It takes a little practice. I've done this three, four times and have a little bit of a technique down. So uh, it's getting a little easier to do. I usually only put tape on one side. You can try both if you want, if you think it will reinforce the film strip and work just as well. So, okay, um, once that's done, right, I'm just doing a quick demonstration how I cut out the squares. I'm pretty much done at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and take out the piece of cardboard and start testing the film strip with my finger, running it through to make sure that none of the holes are, uh, I cut out are obstructed. So you want to make sure that the teeth on these wheels are going through each of the squares that you cut out. And that's why I run it through with my finger. Now the game's going to run a lot faster when it's playing, but this is just a good way to check for any stray pieces of tape or anything that looks like it might be in the way. So I'd run the film strip both of them through and make sure that uh, the teeth are coming through nice and clean on each of the square holes. And then once you've done that, we're ready to put this back together. Okay, before I do the reassembly, I want to give you a close-up view of the finished product here. It doesn't look very clean or uh, looks a little weird, but it does work. It does hold the film strip together. It does keep it from tearing any further. Maybe my X-Acto knife needs resharpened, but I don't like to get too close to the edge of the holes or the squares. That way you're not cutting the plastic anymore. You could try putting a piece of tape on both sides if you think that will reinforce it even more. Uh, this is something that, depending on how much you play the game, you might have to fix it in five years. I don't know. I don't recommend scotch tape. I think packing tape is much more durable and everything. So I've been pretty happy with the results. It's one of the methods I have figured out that's been working for me. So hope it works for you too. All right, so with that, we'll get on with the reassembly and run a quick test. Reassembly should go pretty quick. You pick up the film out. You want to bring the fire assembly through the center of it, pulling the white wire through the center of the fill mount. Again, mine's red, yours will most certainly be white. Make sure the fill mount is down on the screw mounts securely. Do not test the machine without screwing down the fill mount. It will stick and it could damage something. So here I am putting in the four Phillips screws before I run my test. Again, do not test without screwing down the fill mount. Putting the spring back in, just so I don't forget about it. Resiring the white wire back to the gearbox. And we're ready for a quick check. All right, again, all I want to do is test the film strip. I don't care about playing the game and anything else. So the batteries are in. I'm going to turn on the machine. I'm going to run it for, you know, however long I, you feel you need to run it, half a minute, a minute. So uh, this game moved a little slow because I didn't have the new motor in yet, but it served its purpose. I didn't see the film slipping anymore. It was moving pretty, uh, pretty securely. I was pretty happy with it. Okay, so that concludes the repairing of the film strip. I hope you found this video very helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or need any assistance, you can leave a comment below or contact me through YouTube. I'm more than happy to help anybody with these as I enjoy working on them very much. I also have more vintage toy restoration videos in the works, so please check back to my channel periodically. And as always, thank you for watching.